to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway. Now, today I'm taking you back to the reign of King Henry VIII. But on this day in Tudor history, the 6th of October, 1510, John Keyes, spelt Caius, but pronounced Keyes, was born at Norwich. Keyes was a theological scholar and founder of Gonville and Keyes College, Cambridge. But he also served as royal physician to Edward VI, Mary I and Elizabeth I and wrote a book on sweating sickness. Let me tell you a bit more about this Tudor man. John was the son of Robert Caius or Keyes and his wife Alice Wode. He was educated at Norwich School and then at what was known as Gonville Hall, Cambridge, where he studied theology, being influenced by the works of the famous humanist Erasmus. John was gifted at languages and studied Hebrew and translated Greek works into Latin. In 1533, John Keyes became principal of Physics Hall and then fellow of Gonville Hall. It's not clear when he became interested in medicine, but in 1539, he set off for Italy, where he studied medicine at Padua, where he would have learnt the principles of the Greek physician Galen or Garlin. At Padua, John shared a house with the famous 16th century Flemish anatomist, physician and author Andreas Vesalius, who was teaching anatomy at Padua. Keyes graduated in May 1541 and lectured on Aristotle's logic at Padua before moving to Pisa to study and then travelling round the important libraries of Italy, looking at and collecting Greek manuscripts on medicine and philosophy. Keyes published a collection of Galenic texts in Greek at Basel in 1544, along with his own work, De Methodo Medendi, which was based on what he'd been taught at Padua by his professor, Johannes Baptista Montanus. He then returned home to England. In 1546, when he was back in England, he was appointed by King Henry VIII to start a series of anatomical demonstrations for the London barber surgeons, which he did for 20 years. And in 1547, he became a fellow of the London College of Physicians. In the reigns of Mary I and Elizabeth I, Keyes served as president of the College of Physicians on several occasions. He also made a living from working as a physician in London and at court, attending Edward VI, Mary I and Elizabeth I. His financial support of the College of Physicians led to the refurbishment of the tomb of its founder, Thomas Lineker, at St Paul's. And he also used his wealth to enlarge, convert and refound Gonville Hall as Gonville and Keyes College in 1557. He became master of the college in 1559. Keyes was a religious conservative and hoarded religious relics at his college. In 1572, his room was ransacked and his collection burnt and smashed. Keyes returned to London and died at his home near St Bartholomew's Hospital on the 29th of July, 1573. He left his library and property to the college he'd founded with instructions for a tomb to be built for him in the college chapel. His tomb can still be seen there today with its Latin inscriptions, which translate to, virtue lives beyond the grave, and I was Keyes. His works include a history of Cambridge University, translation of Galen's works or Garland's works, and works on the Greek and Latin languages. Keyes was also interested in zoology and was a keen naturalist. He wrote a book on British dogs and also rare plants and animals. Keyes also wrote a book on sweating sickness in which he noted that the illness was not entirely new but that it hath been before seen among the Greeks in the siege of Troy, in the Emperor Octavius' wars at Cantabria, called now Biscay in Spain, and in the Turks at the Rhodes. He also listed its main symptoms and wrote of how he would have named the disease ephemera of England, an ephemera being a fever of one natural day rather than simply sweating sickness, because this disease only affected people for up to 24 hours and was no sweat only, but a fever. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 6th of October, 1536, reformer, scholar and Bible translator William Tyndall was executed. One of Tyndall's works had helped King Henry VIII, while another incurred the king's wrath and led to Tyndall's execution. Why? 
what happened? Well, you can find out in last year's video and you'll find a link to that in the description. Thank you for joining me today. You can subscribe to this channel by clicking just around about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live and you can give me a like and leave me a comment. Thank you, take care, bye-bye.